Weaklings, welcome back to my channel. I'm finally doing a little sit-down video. I haven't done one of these in so long. I have a new setup here, which you guys will have to wait and see for the next video, I believe, because my best friend's moving in. I, just, I changed everything. Everything got rearranged in my apartment. I still haven't even done an apartment tour. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Today, I'm gonna be giving you guys the best advice I possibly can. I am just one person. Don't listen to everything I say. I would like some advice on losing weight. Okay. I actually do have some good advice. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a personal trainer. This is just my advice and what's worked for me. I've currently started losing weight again. Like I started two weeks ago or so. I'm on a little fitness journey. I'm doing a 90 day challenge. If you guys want to join me, um, I'm going to make a whole 90 day transformation video. Um, I should probably do a video just kind of telling you guys about starting my fitness journey, but this is my plan. I'm calling it the 90 day challenge or 90 day change, whatever. Because I tried 75 hard, didn't work out. This is like a watered down version. So I'm gonna try to drink. Oh my gosh. Mm. Okay, so I can't pick this up with one hand. I'm gonna drink half a gallon of water a day. And I'm gonna throw in my advice while I talk about this. Water, 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 water. I cannot express it enough. I'm the worst at it, but when I have done it, it has changed my life. It gives you more energy, clears up your skin. It gives you healthy hair, healthy nails. You're less hungry, so you eat less, which literally makes you lose weight. It's just overall so, so, so needed. Number two is sleep. Try to sleep at least eight hours a day. Sleep is so important in your weight loss journey and it sounds stupid, but it is, and avoiding stress. And water and sleep somehow help you avoid stress. Number two on my thing is I'm gonna try to do two 30 minute workouts a day. And they don't have to be exactly 30 minutes, just two like solid getting my heart rate up. It could be a walk and a gym or whatever it is. Two 30 minute workouts a day. Um, and then I'm going to portion slash calorie count every day. So this is my biggest advice when it comes to weight loss. Everything breaks down to calories in versus calories out. So however many calories you burn in a day, you have to eat less than that. So I use an app. There's a ton of different apps. Mine costs money, but I have it free. I don't know how I managed that. But anyways, um, there's a ton of different apps out there. I'm sure you could find one. I wish I had a good one to give. I use Noom, but it's kind of expensive. So honestly, like you don't have to use it. That calculate how many calories you should be eating a day. If you have like an Apple watch, then it tells you how many calories you've burned in like active calories. And then it calculates that in for you so you can eat a little more, but don't under eat, don't overeat. It's all about portions. Literally, like they say, abs are made in the kitchen. You will not lose weight if you're not watching what you eat. So eat foods that fill you up, keep you sustained throughout the day. My biggest thing is don't cut out any foods because the second you cut out a food, all you want to do is eat that food. So you can eat whatever, just eat small portions and count those calories. Okay, moving on, that was a long one. <laughs> okay, this might be another long one. Getting on fire for God, I need some advice for that. I don't know if it's just because I'm a new Christian, I hope that I continue this fire and passion I have for God my whole life, but God has completely transformed my life, me as a person, literally saved my life. And so all I ever wanna do is talk about God, talk to God, read about God, learn more about God. And that's like what we're supposed to do. Literally all we have to do on li in life, like big picture, is get to know God and tell others about God. But some advice that I have if you're kind of struggling is, well, one, ask God to help you. Ask him to help you be on fire. Um, read his word every day. If you're spending like actual separated time with him every day and his word, praying to him, it's gonna help you a ton. Three would be dedicate every single day to God. It's like first thing when you wake up, dedicate it to God. That has helped me a ton. And every time you're having an issue, if this takes a lot of like training and stuff and I'm still working on it, like getting yourself to think this way, but that's part of like Jesus renewing your heart and your mind is like anytime things are happening, immediately thank God, ask God, reach out to God. He should be your number one best friend who you go to all the time. That helps a ton. And also something else that helped me a lot is talking to other Christians, finding Christian communities who are also on fire for God. And the more you can spend time talking about Jesus, how he's transformed your life, how amazing his grace and mercy is, the more on fire you're gonna be for him because you're like more thankful for him. Anyway, um, I really, really love Jesus. I could talk about him all day, but I'll just leave it at that for now. Advice on moving to a completely different state. So it definitely depends for everyone. Um, do you have friends there? Do you have family there? Is this a 
brand new fresh start. My advice is to do some research ahead of time if you don't know exactly where you're gonna live. Um, go tour the apartments in person if you can or the houses so you know like the area you're gonna live in and stuff. And then immediately when you get there, you wanna try to get yourself immersed in the community as quickly as you can, whether it's a job or a church, some sort of whatever like your niche or what do you call it? <laughs> Your hobbies are. Try to like get on Facebook, find some communities, get involved, make friends because, oh, even Bumble BFF. The more involved you can get, the more you're gonna love your new area. You can always look up like places to go or when you're out to eat, ask the waiters like, hey, where's like cool places around here to go? I just moved to this state and people will always be willing to give you advice about their city or state or whatever. Hope that helped. How to be confident. Woo. For me, I started by faking it, and you really sometimes do just gotta fake it till you make it. I'm like, I am Christian, so I'm always gonna take things back to God. So we'll just say that right off the bat. I didn't have full confidence until I gave my life to Jesus, because now, anything that happens to me, anything I do, whatever, I'm just like, whatever, I have God. So if I embarrass myself, it's fine. It's whatever, it really doesn't matter. And I don't really know how else to explain it. Like confidence is all just about your mindset. So if you go into something like being super anxious about it, you're like, oh, but what if I mess up? What if I embarrass myself? What if I say the wrong thing? Then you're probably gonna do those things. But if you go into it like, you know what? It honestly doesn't matter. I'm never gonna see this person again. Or if it is people you see often, who cares? <laughs> like we all need to learn to like be more lighthearted and forgive each other, not take everything so serious. So you kind of just have to go into it. Like I am just gonna say what I'm, thinking I'm just gonna do the things and most people don't care. Here's another good advice. Most people in this world are more focused on themselves than they are anyone else. It's kind of just a fact. Who cares? Literally who cares? Everyone's gonna forget about it in 10 minutes. Uh, what to do when friendships are ending. Oh, this is so hard. Sometimes this can be even harder than like relationship breakup. When your friendships are ending, you just kind of have to appreciate the good, but remember the bad. I feel like that goes with breakups too. Appreciate what was good in it, but let it go because we're not meant to have all these people in our lives forever, especially if it, it, these are friends from high school or even from college. People move on, people grow apart, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to hate the other person. I, I mean, I get it if there's like a big falling out, it's hard to not be resentful, but the best thing you can do is forgive anything that went wrong because forgiveness sets you free and accept it and find a way to move on and find new friends. Because a lot of times you hold on to, some, to who someone was when they met you and not who they are now. Because we all change all the time. We're always progressing. No matter which way that is, good or bad, we're all progressing. Sometimes when you progress with a friend, it kind of ends up like this. And sometimes it is more like this. So that's just kind of life. And you just kind of have to accept it and appreciate that that person was in your life for a period and you learned with them and had good times with them. And maybe there were some bad too and you don't want to forget that either. But you can forgive. You don't have to forget. You don't have to reconcile. I don't know if that was good advice. <laughs> Advice for relationships and trusting God's plan. Um, well, relationships like a whole separate thing, but if you're talking about trusting God's plan with relationships, you just have to remember that God created you and this other person and this world and this universe. And his plan is always so much bigger than what we could ever imagine. Even if it means letting go of someone right now, we might not understand it. What if it leads to something even better? And if it's God's plan, it is gonna lead to something better. So you just have to always bring it back to that big picture. Advice for finding a new home church. Ooh, I recently had to do this. I guess technically the second time I've had to find a church since being a Christian. And it was a little stressful, but here is my advice. Um, I mean, you can look up churches like in your area and just go on their website and kind of see what their principles are. And then you can go to the church you can spend as long as you need going to different churches, trying to figure out which one is gonna be the best fit for you and where God wants you. Make sure that you're talking to God about this. Like, it's stuff you really need to be cautious of because even in the Christian world, there are churches that will use God as an excuse to do bad things or to manipulate people or get money out of people. You need to make sure that when you go to a church, when that pastor is talking, it is in the Bible. It's in God's word. It's biblically based. He's not going on a tangent about stuff that he's just making up. It's all biblically based and it all comes back to the truth of Jesus and Jesus dying for us and being resurrected three days later. Like if they're trying to add on to that, like, okay, there's Jesus plus some. No, we don't want plus some. We just want Jesus. We want what Jesus, Jesus taught, Jesus principles, how we can grow our relationship in Jesus. So everything needs to be centered around that. So as long as it's biblically based wherever God wants you 
Um, if you prefer a church that has more like worship music, bands, stuff like that, you can go to a church like that. But if you prefer somewhere that's more like old fashioned, then you can go to a church like that. I think the most important thing is just finding a place that's biblically based and a place where you can find community and not feel like you don't fit in. Um, like my church has all these different community groups. So I found one that I could go to and fit in with people my age. How to draw boundaries on a toxic friendship. Ooh, boundaries are so important. I have a book, it's literally called Boundaries. Just look it up on Amazon, I just read it and it's everything you need to know. It's Christian based and amazing, amazing advice. Boundaries are good for you and the other person and it teaches you and the other person things that need to be taught. So if you don't know how to set boundaries with someone, you just gotta, you just have to start small and start somewhere and then slowly add on. You have to be willing to put your foot down and kind of call this person out sometimes. And even though it might be hard in the moment, it's way harder and more stress on a friendship to not set boundaries than it is to have a few awkward moments and set those boundaries. And if when you set boundaries, this person leaves, then it was never a good friendship to start with. Okay, someone else said, I cannot be confident in myself or love myself at all no matter what I do. Help. You need some Jesus. And if you're already Christian, you need more. You need to spend more time with God. That is like, I know sometimes it sucks to hear, but that's the only thing that helped me because I was on a path to my death basically before I met Jesus. And I don't even know how to give other advice because that's, that's it. I'm trying to think of like other advice I could give though. Okay, I did want to talk a little bit about this and I think it'll help. I think it helps a lot of people. Um, there's a few things. Comparing. Stop comparing yourself to especially people on the internet. Everyone posts their highlights. No one's completely honest or truthful on the internet. Stop comparing yourself to the internet. Stop comparing yourself to your friends, to your family. You are your own individual. You are not other people. You are not and you don't have to be what other people's expectations are put on you. You're your own person. You can set your own expectations. You can set your own goals. You don't have to listen to anyone else setting expectations on you or forcing you to do anything or be a certain type of person. You're your own person. That, that'll that help. No comparing, setting your own expectations. Taking care of your body helps so much. And I'm not saying you have to be some like crazy fitness person, but like get outside, go on a 10 minute walk eat a little healthier, drink some more water. Like it's crazy how that literally changes the way your brain thinks. Like it like gives you these endorphins and like makes you feel good about yourself. Find stuff you love and surround yourself with people who love you. I mean, like I said, you kind of become the people you're closest with. So if you're surrounding yourself with negative people who are sad all the time, then that's how you're gonna be. And if you're surrounding yourself with awesome, positive, motivated people, then that's how you're gonna be too. And my other thing that I really, like the whole idea I even had to make this video was to talk about this topic and it's chasing happiness. I feel like everyone has this issue of chasing happiness and like the goal in life is to be happy. So I'm gonna sit here and say something a little uh, unpopular and say you don't have to be happy. The goal in life is not to be happy. Happiness comes and goes. It's an emotion. You can be happy because it's sunny outside and then be sad because you spilt your cup of coffee everywhere. Happiness is simply an emotion that we feel the same with sadness. We shouldn't chase being happy just like we shouldn't chase being sad. The goal with your emotions, I guess, is to be content no matter what's going on. The only way I've found to do that is through Jesus and like true joy in Jesus. Seriously stop chasing being happy because I chased this happiness train for for so long and you will never find it because as soon as you think oh I've reached my peak of happiness something else will happen or you now have higher expectations and now you're chasing happiness in another way you're like oh well I'll be happy once this happens and then once that thing happens okay well I'll be happy when this happens and then that thing happens well I'll be happy when I'll be happy when I have more money I'll be happier when I have this dream job I'll be happier when I have a pet I'll be happier in a relationship I'll be happier single I'll be happier in a different state you can do all those things and you still won't achieve happiness because it's not about happiness. You can be happy in a moment and sad in the next. It's about that true like inner content joy. Um, another like kind of quote um, comes from my stepdad, Sam, and my mom says it all the time too. They actually gave me this ring on my birthday, the mountains one, to represent it. And they always tell me, don't ever let your highs get too high and don't let your lows get too low. You shouldn't be like on these mood swings all the time. I'm chasing happiness and it didn't work out. So now I'm disappointed because my expectations were too high. Just just be content in life. Not everything's always gonna work out. Bad things happen in this world. And if you're always chasing happiness and trying to achieve this like 
nirvana of happiness it's just never gonna happen and you are giving yourself crazy high expectations that no one expects of you not even god himself expects that of you what you need to be doing is finding a way to be level and content and have joy in all things it doesn't matter if something crazy bad is happening in your life in the world in your family's life there's drama whatever it is you're still you and you're still chilling and you're still content. And I think that was my biggest issue, idea of needing to be happy and chasing happiness and seeing what everyone was posting. Oh, they'll be, they're so happy. I'd be so happy if I was like that. I'd be so happy if I was in a relationship like that. I'd be so happy if X, Y, Z. Well, no, <laughs> that's not how it works. Um, happiness is just an emotion and we have lots of emotions and that's not the only one. So just enjoy the ride of life of being happy sometimes, being sad sometimes. And just cause something bad happens doesn't mean it's the end of the world. This is so much harder put in motion than said, but I feel like it just needed to be said. So here I am saying it. <laughs> um, and I kind of want to end on that. Jesus loves you. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> I love you guys also. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.